All right, welcome. In this video, I want to start a series of videos where I'm going to talk a little bit about complex systems and complex system simulation. In order to do that, I want to begin by defining what a complex system is. We can begin with this definition from the Merriam-Webster dictionary of a system. Here we have a system is a group of interacting or interrelated entities that form a unified whole. I'll start by saying that it emphasizes that a system is a group of entities. And here, a group, we don't really say in, in a lot of detail, but we're sort of implying more than one here. A system that has only one entity or maybe even zero entities is a kind of degenerate system or maybe is not a system at all. Not just any group of entities will form a system, but those group of entities, when taken together, should form a unified whole. That means at least conceptually for us as human beings, that when we think of these, this group of entities as a set together, that that set forms something new, something that we could maybe give a name to. And then it's also important, although not really emphasized in this definition, that these entities interact with one another. And that's going to become more important when we add a next layer to our definition. The next definition that I want to introduce comes from Wikipedia, and this is the definition of a complex system. Now, in system science, the words system and complex system are usually used interchangeably. Uh, most systems that we are concerned with in the real world are complex systems, and every once in a while, we will stress that we mean something that is not a complex system, a simple system, a closed system, or an isolated system. But here's a definition of what a complex system is. A complex system is a system composed of many components which may interact with each other. This definition is very similar to the one we just saw. It has changed its emphasis. Instead of saying a group of entities, it now says many components. And this is borrowing a little bit of the technical language that is employed by complex system science. And that is usually we talk about the entities that a system is comprised as we call them components. This definition brings extra emphasis to the idea that these components must interact with one another. While this definition says they may interact with one another, that's to at least give us the possibility that some components do not interact with other components, a system is really defined by the fact that its components, at least in some way, interact with one another. Now I wanted to add just one extra little spin to this definition, which is again something that is important and included in a lot of complex system definitions, is that the components themselves are usually systems as well. And that gives us a recursive definition of complex system. That is, a complex system is comprised of other complex systems. And at least this sets up the potential for a hierarchy of systems where a system is comprised of subsystems, which are comprised of other subsystems all the way down. To investigate this idea, let's start with the system that we're probably familiar with, which is the solar system. The solar system is a collection of entities. In this case, the entities would be the various planets in the solar system, as well as the other entities in the solar system that also make up the solar system, like the asteroid belt and the sun. These entities interact with one another through physical interactions, that is through the force of gravity. And the force of gravity keeps these planets in, for the most part, a stable orbit around the sun. In my next video, we're going to take a closer look at orbiting around an object. But we could zoom in on one of these components of the solar system and we might find ourselves at the Earth. The Earth being one of the entities that makes up the solar system, but itself is a very complex system. In fact, as we can see just in this image, that the Earth itself is comprised of many, many different interacting subsystems. Uh, for instance, the oceans and the atmosphere make up the climate system of the Earth. The uh, Amazon, which we can just see here, is an ecosystem that is comprised of many subsystems, being species and so on. And all of these different systems together interact to make up what we sometimes just call Mother Earth, the overall system. Zooming in even further into one of these systems now, we might be able to find a human being. And a human being is it's themselves a very complex system. 
That system is comprised of many other subsystems as well. This image depicts some of the subsystems, the musculature system, skeletal system, the digestive system, the circulatory system, the nervous system, the immune system. All of these different systems have the word system right in their names to emphasize that these are themselves subsystems comprised of other components and other subsystems themselves. We can continue this exploration by going even a little bit further. We can go into one of these organs, the human brain. Now the human brain itself is a very sophisticated system that is comprised of many different subsystems. We can identify sub-organs in the brain, but even further we could go down to the cellular level and recognize that the human brain is made out of neurons. Each neuron itself is a fairly sophisticated cell that has different parts and components like axons and dendrites and synapses and we can zoom right into that neuron and find that the neuron itself is a very sophisticated system it is a cell and inside that cell we might have a cellular nucleus we might have a cell membrane and all of these are made up of even more you guessed it sophisticated systems maybe zooming into the nucleus inside the nucleus there is the dna the DNA itself is a very large strand, it's a very large molecule, and it is formed up of smaller molecules and atoms, nucleotides, biochemical elements like carbon and oxygen. So we could zoom in even further into one of those atoms and we can see that that atom itself is a fairly sophisticated system comprised of other subsystems, protons, electrons, neutrons, and other subatomic particles and then those subatomic particles themselves even are comprised of smaller subsystems and in fact by pushing this envelope as far as we can get it we can get down to this this level of subatomic particles and we actually get to a level called the quantum barrier where being able to see anything smaller than the quantum barrier violates our current understanding of physics, meaning it violates something known as the uncertainty principle, um, and that tells us that we can never be certain about, well, various statistics about subatomic particles, for instance, specifically their position and their momentum. If we know one, we're going to be uncertain about the other. Um, and this, uh, this quantum barrier means that we we expect that there's probably systems even be below this barrier, but we can't really see what those systems necessarily are. Well, quantum physicists go about imagining what kind of systems those might be, and we have actually invented a whole mathematics to model those systems, uh, given that we might be uncertain about what they look like too. So this means that we can take this sort of system definition from where we started on the level of, of the macro level of, of planets and solar systems, and we could, go, we could have gone even further than that, galaxies and, and the whole universe, and we've narrowed ourselves all the way down at least to the, the boundary of our own ability to see smaller than this. We can't see any smaller than an atom or subatomic particles. And so this, even though this is tantalizingly the bottom of our at least ability to see, uh, we can still imagine or, or hypothesize that we could get smaller and smaller all the way down. So that means almost everything is a system. If you can think of it, it's probably a system. If it has a name, it's probably a system. So what is not a system then? Is this even a helpful definition? And that's a good question and worthwhile question to ask. Um, and it is a helpful definition. Uh, and there are some things that are not systems. Um, but to find something that's not a system is, is a, a little bit of an academic task in the sense that we have to work a little bit to try and find something that's not a system. Anything that's reasonable that pops to mind is probably a system, which means to make something that's not a system, I'm going to construct one. I say here that an arbitrary collection of entities is not necessarily a system. I have to put not I have to put necessarily in there because it could be a system if I just pick some arbitrary entities it might be a system but the idea here is that by just picking some entities out arbitrarily 
without any thought to how they might interact or be related to each other, you might, you're probably not going to get a system. You might have picked out a couple of subsystems, but they don't have any logical way they fit together. So I'll give you an example. The, I'll just pick some arbitrary uh, elements here. So I've got a rubber band here on my desk. That's one of the entities. Uh, I'll, I'll pick uh, Serena Williams, one of my favorite tennis players. And, and then I'll pick uh, the planet Mercury, not one of my favorite planets. Um, those three entities, this rubber band, Serena Williams and the planet Mercury, those are all systems themselves. And they are all, they, we could say they're all subsystems of this weird thing I've, I've, I've made with the three of them. But the three of them put together just because I've named them and put them together, that does not make a system. Even though they, they interact, potentially this elastic band might be picked up by Serena Williams one day. And I imagine that the gravitational pull of Mercury has some kind of effect on, on both of them. But that type of interaction is not interesting to us. And so when I, when I get asked this question, how do you decide if something is a system or not, the, the measuring stick that I use to determine if it is a system or not is, is there anything interesting we can say about that system? And if the answer is yes, then it's a system. And if the answer is no, then it is not a system yet. It might be as soon as you come up with something interesting to say about it. But until then, I'm going to say it's not a system. All right, there are a lot of systems in the universe and there's a lot to say about those systems. So in the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the properties of complex systems that make them interesting to us and why we might want to study them. All right. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next video.